Twain the They're Bay. probably gonna be like one of those uh, movie scenes where they're eating and but they're talking, so they're just like playing with their food, like the whole we're just, time. We're just going like this to the <laughs> yeah. rice, like this. <laughs> Okay, so I'm so excited about this because we have been working on this collaboration for since last year. Since last year. Yeah, and now it's finally happening. <laughs> socks. Fish sauce. Not hot sauce. I guess it's so hard for fish. Me to say. Fish sauce socks. <laughs> I love this bucket hat. I mean, I love bucket hats in general. I think it just adds something to the outfit. It just adds like a cool vibe to the outfit and you can style it in so many ways. So I'm a big fan of bucket hats and I just knew that I needed one in this collection. So the bucket hat's up there, but I think maybe my favorite piece would have to be the hoodie. Okay. The hoodie's dope. Like I haven't seen that type of sleeve. Um, and the fact that, again, the recipes on the actual clothing piece, insane. I see the shrimp, I see spring rolls, I see my knives, I see garlic. Like this is all me, this is Tway. There's a tea in there that explains what Vung Tao is, which is where I'm from. And I just want people to like have that knowledge of the places in Vietnam that they're not, it's not so common to know. Vung Tao is a small town. It's a fishing town. It actually started with three little cor corners of the town that like were designated to like these three brothers that founded Vung Tao. It started out as like three little yeah. pockets. Yeah, and then it just expanded into this really dope and cool beach town. I love, yeah. I love that so much and I think that it's such a beautiful piece and it, you can really tell how much love you have for your hometown, the history behind it, and then also just like how you want to share that with your audience. Yeah. And you can really just feel that even through like the food, mm -hmm. right, and all of your recipes. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know that it was like, I don't know, I see it as appreciation as well because I didn't appreciate it when I was there. When I first moved over here in America, it just kind of felt off. You had to get adjusted super quickly. Yeah. I was thrown into school right away. Didn't how, know. how old were you? By I was way? eight years old. I'm like trying to talk to people and I'm like speaking gibberish to them. I'm like, they have no idea what I'm like. There's this specific story that I remember just like this little kid asking me like, I think he was sitting in the same table as me. He's like, so where are you from? And I'm like trying my best to explain it. And I, in my head, I feel like I was explaining right, it right. But he was just, kept, he just kept saying, huh? <laughs> huh? There, there wasn't a lot of like Vietnamese or even just Asian flavors in American culinary school. I just had to take it upon myself to teach myself how to cook these flavors that I grew up eating. That's when I first started to really like study and learn the flavors of my mom's cooking, Vietnamese cooking. And then I combined that with my Western techniques that I learned. So for me, that's why a lot of times I say that my cuisine is Vietnamese, but my techniques and everything are American. Technically, you can't have authentic Vietnamese food over here in America because the food is not even from the land, you know? So no. technically it, it can never be as authentic as over in Vietnam, but it's, it's the flavors, it's the, the similar flavors that you remember. And the fact that I, I'm able to share that with other people my age and have them feel like they can do it too and have food be this cool thing and knowing how to cook food and knowing how to cook for yourself is cool, you know? Why is it that like the only two types of popular foods are the ones that have been touched by Europeans? Mm. Um, so that used to irk me a lot until I started doing more research. The Vietnamese people weren't allowed to eat baguette because that was only supposed to be for the French. Like oh, Vietnamese wow, people, no yeah, Vietnamese people were not allowed to eat French baguette or like anything that the French brought over, they weren't allowed to eat that. For the longest time, like pe Vietnamese people were like hiding and like, or crafting their own. And I think that just like fuzz and bun mi just came out of that being so iconic because those are the flavors that we weren't ever allowed to 
enjoy but we turned that and made it into something way better mm -hmm. and made it into a our like our staple and what we're known for and i think that's so fucking cool just put yourself out there because what i get a lot of times from people is like you're such an inspiration like going after your dreams and all of that stuff but like everybody literally anybody can do that too i guess my overall message was just to do it for you make it happen just do it <laughs> just do it <laughs> just do it <laughs> hopefully we were able to capture your essence and like your story in the way 100%. that you wanted to and so we're just happy to be on this journey with you and thank you for partnering with us oh my god thank you <laughs> for partnering with me and allowing me to really tell the story through the pieces and you guys being so just amazing literally in every single step that you guys have done i don't know anything about making clothes so the fact that we have professionals <laughs> along the way just really pushing the whole collection out is amazing you guys truly talked to me and made me feel like i was a part of every single step it just felt like we were creating something together that really speaks to me and what the, the whole story that I'm trying to tell. So thank you. Hugs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap. Woo.